Welcome to an exciting day on the Voice of Resurrection broadcast. The revolution we need is not marching. The revolution we need is for the church to get saved. We are taking a stand for Jesus. A stand for the family. A stand for God in America. One of the things that I have seen is that our concept of God in a vacuum is magnanimous. If you talk to any believer, God is all powerful. There's nothing God cannot do. But when you go into the life of the same believer, his faith in the God he just believed in in a vacuum is so small. What we're trying to learn is to take what we believe about God and bring it into a world. So the same way I'm shouting that God can do all things. All things are possible with God. That my God can work miracles. My God can move mountains. My God can defeat any devil. I need to bring him into my life and say that my God will deliver me. Hallelujah. My God will win this fight. My God will move this mountain. My God. Hallelujah. Will bring the giant down in my life. Hallelujah. Let us bring the faith we had in a vacuum into a personal world. So that it will cease to be a theory. And then we can walk in it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. I want to show you scripturally God's perspective. Why did God save us? Why did God choose the weak things? Why didn't God choose strong I know some of you think that you're strong. But the Bible said that God chose the foolish things. <laughs> God chose the weak things. And your breakthrough begins when you own up that you're in the number. Because what is happening and what is about to happen on the earth we will need more than emotion to combat the sinister, wicked, and adulterous generation who are desperately trying to get hold to power to control our lives. You can see, as I mentioned Sunday, only a few weeks ago, people thought that the demonstrations were, were going to change America. This is a new day. But have you looked at the news? If God doesn't do anything, none of these things will accomplish anything. Because only God can change a man's heart. And I've told you that the church is to blame. Because most of these people go to church. But as soon as they leave church, they are first, whatever, white or black. And you may think that it's only white people are like that. Most, some of you are very black. You are not Christian. You are black first. Some of you are Democrat first before you are Christian. I'm not running. <laughs> you see, but it's the responsibility of the church to show a man that you are now in Christ. 
Uh, you don't understand the magnitude of what I said. But when I get in my message, you will see that I am now in Christ. Hmm? That God has forgiven me and made me his son. There's no way a son of God will carry hate against anyone. Because you know that the spirit of the living God is in that other man. The revolution we need is not marching. The revolution we need is for the church to get saved. And come back to God. And then the demons that are kicking us around and will start running from us. You notice that when Jesus showed up, they were crying. They were begging him. They were not <laughs> and trying to threaten him. They said, oh, please, don't, 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 don't cast us out. Uh, so, America will change when the church changes. When believers, true believers will come out of church. And the power of the grace of God becomes the common denominator. I believe that the greatest disservice, and you've heard me say this before, but I'll say it again. The greatest disservice that the church has done to God is in our attempt to help people do better. We taught them how to get things from God. And that was the thrust of our Christianity. We didn't teach the people that God has a kingdom he wants to establish on the earth. We didn't teach the people that you have a responsibility in helping God get that done. You notice, most of us don't even have a concept that God needs anything. There are things that God did when he set up his kingdom. And he needs a man to cooperate with him for those things to work. When God created Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful and multiply. God's not going to do that for you. Now watch this. When Jesus needed a donkey to ride into Jerusalem to fulfill prophecy, he sent two of his disciples. Listen carefully. How did he know who to send? If you look at the nature of the assignment, not every disciple in that group could have been sent. It's like the Lord sending you to somebody's driveway. And you go there and you start hot wiring the car. And they come and say, what are you doing? You said the Lord had need of it. And they will let you have the car. You see? He said, the Lord hath need of it. You notice? Jesus could have done, and the donkey will arise. But he chose to get it from a man. Can you imagine what happened to the destiny of the man that provided the donkey? To fulfill prophecy. That's what I'm teaching this church. That in all your praying, in all your understanding, in all your worshiping, you want to be a part of what God is doing on the earth. If God can use you to answer a prayer, if God can use you to fulfill prophecy, if God can use you to get his agenda done on the earth, you would have left 99% of all God's people and you would have arisen to the elite of the kingdom. You will find yourself in a realm where most people don't even know that it exists because God won't talk to you because you're busy hassling him for what you want. You don't even ask him, Lord, what do you need from me? Why did you let me live?
I was on the street doing all kinds of things, and then you still let me live. These are the questions you need to start asking. Hallelujah. I know I haven't gotten to the responsibility of grace, but I'm giving you a hint. You see? Because that's what conquest is all about. Meaning, it doesn't matter how the enemy is warring against you. You have to believe that your destiny is sure. It doesn't matter what you're struggling with. You need to believe that the grace of God will bring you through. Hallelujah. Your amen should be stronger. So because the enemy is a master, as saying, well, you can't get anything done. Look at you. He said, eh, yes, God knew me and chose me. There's some things you need to say to the, the, to the enemy and put a dagger in his heart. Here's one. God had a choice. And he chose me anyway. Glory to God. You have to understand the strategies of warfare. Now, to start out tonight, I want you to go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Isn't that amazing? To know that what you are is the will of God. Hallelujah. You don't understand why I say some of the things I say during our services. You see, because you are a woman by the will of God. Amen. I'm a man by the will of God. So when Satan generates gender confusion, he's trying to distort the very foundation of life. And when we are talking about conquest, you ought to understand that the war we're engaged in is beyond ourselves. That what I'm doing is so critical. Not only that I'm, am I preaching to you, but this word will go on television and on radio and on the internet. What are we doing? We're putting out the light of the word of God in the airwaves. No, listen. To challenge the principalities and the powers that are ruling these ideas and these concepts. And when the word of God comes through the airwaves, demons tremble. Hallelujah. Because if we don't do that in the next 20, 30 years, hey, you talk about massive confusion. In Canada, they're telling children, you're gender neutral. However you feel that day, that's the gender you are. So today, he may come to school in, in boys' clothes. And then tomorrow, he comes in girls' clothes. There's no way we can sit around and let that happen. Yeah. Conquest is not just me getting my prayers answered. Conquest is saying, Lord, I'm standing with you in America. I don't know what you guys ate over here. I said, I'm standing with you. I will stand with the word of God. I don't care what I'm going through personally. But there are issues bigger than me. There are issues bigger than you. We must stand up for God in America. Yeah. Satan has released their spirit to use the vehicle of discrimination to change the conversation so that nobody is wrong anymore. If you say that something is sin, it means you are discriminating. That's hate speech. And unfortunately, many of you in church have that mindset. And I keep telling you, it's the Antichrist. Amen. 
I'm telling you the things I, I'm told to say before I start preaching other things to you. He told me to tell you, if you disagree with any part of this Bible, he says you are an anti-Christ. Because Jesus and his word are one. And he said, he that is not for me is against me. He said, there's no neutral ground. He that gathereth not with me is scattering. Ooh, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, a resurrection house for all nations. We are taking a stand for Jesus. A stand for the family. A stand for God in America. Because what I love about what I'm preaching is that this is even a faster way for you to get everything you desire from God. When you make his business yours. Huh? The Bible spoke about Jesus. He said that the zeal of your house has eaten me up. And how can his son or daughter not have a zeal for the house of God? So when we are talking about conquest, we want to start from within. We want to chase out every antichrist devil in this church and in the church of Jesus Christ. The only way you can survive under my preaching is that you yield to God and let this circular mindset go. And I'm glad when you do, when Jesus appears, you will love me. Yeah. Hallelujah. You will hug me. You will thank me that I wasn't scared. And I preached the truth to you. I'm not afraid of preaching anything. There's no debt on this ministry. People have left, and it didn't change anything. Because I found out if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he said, oh, come on, how many? I can hear you. How many? These things shall be. That's the fastest way to get your breakthrough. When your prayer life is transformed and you're praying about what burdens God and you're praying what God has assigned us to do to come to pass and you're praying that God will rule and reign in America, God will answer your prayers. You might think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, you ought to celebrate tonight as you're sitting in this house that you know who you are. Amen. I'm not even talking about in Christ. That God has protected you from these demons running around. Amen. That you're a woman and you have no desire to be a man. Amen. You're a man, you have no desire to be a woman. Amen. You are to celebrate the God. You ought to thank him that these demons don't have any place in your life, in your family's life. I am who I am in the will of God. When we're speaking about conquest, I know we did a, a flag thing and came around. Maybe next time when we do it, we give better instruction. Because the conquest begins with me. God said, what grieves me should grieve you. 
But offense me should offend you. Even if you are guilty, you say, Lord, I don't want to be a part with them. I'm standing with you. All right. The way I'm going. <laughs> okay. What's this? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. To the faithful. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath. Come on, I, I don't expect you to be a philologist or, you know, philology is the study of languages. You know, let, don't let that throw you. I already see how some of you started looking at me. All right? Uh, or to be a linguist. But did you see, when you see half, what does that mean? It is past tense. He said that means he has already done it. Now, this is an example of the things the Lord was talking to me about, and he found that that's where I needed to start. Because there is so much that God said that he has done for us. We hear of it. He doesn't even challenge us. He doesn't even bother us that we are not living in the reality of it. Can you believe the way you and I carry on? That he said that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. Where are these people? You see how much we have left on the table. And it don't even bother us. That's why when you start praying the things that God has done, that you are not walking in, immediately he will be interested. Not your... Your, your list of the things you want him to do. And one of the things we keep missing, we think that we joined this, this church by accident. We don't know that the angel of the Lord routed us here. Because what is in me is the answer to your destiny. Watch this. So when I tell you my stories, I'm telling you them so you know what not to do and how to position yourself to get the same kind of breakthroughs. So if God screamed at me, stop irritating me with your list, then why do you keep messing with him with your list? You see what I'm saying? You hear those testimonies, but you keep carrying on like you never heard them. He said, I know what things you have need of before you ask me. And I told you that's when I learned that prayer is not giving God information. He already knows. Love it is a blessing to celebrate with you as we share excerpts from our 2020 Conquest Conference. It's, uh, uh, it's just an amazing thing. It was powerful. The glory grew over those two days. And the third day ended in that amazing water baptism. I pray that at some point they will share some excerpts with you. But have you recognized how much you've left on the table? The things that the Lord our God has done for us, promised us that we're not walking in. He says you've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I didn't understand that. I never felt like it. I didn't see anybody walking in it. He said that it happened in Christ, in the anointed one, his anointed. So I don't have to start imagining things in the sky, heavens, you know, that. No, no, no. I should dig deeper in the word and, 
and yield to the Holy Spirit and he brings me into that realm of power and realm of understanding and I'm able to see the enemy for who he is and I'm taught how to deal with him and I overrun him by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you must do. This is meat for the mature. This is why I'm telling you that the season has come where God is releasing many of you to come and learn the meat of the world and become part of God's end time global army. Amen. Time for church is over. Time for being black is over. <laughs> this is the time to be a son of God. Whether you're white, black, Hispanic, don't make any difference. But I always hone in on the black thing because I, I'm sent to the African American community and I'm ministering primarily there. And, and, I, and I know that in so many ways, you know, being black or being in this party is, is just, uh, whew, may God open our eyes that we may see the war we are in so that we who, who are the restraining force on the earth will get up and stop the enemy. <laughs> Even in our weakness, we can do it. God said, even if you're limping on one leg, you are still higher than all devils. Those things are transformational. So even when I'm struggling, I'm not scared of any devil because I know that the final arbiter is God. God is the one sitting on the throne and you cannot get anything done except God approves. So it's God I'm worried about. Amen. Where are you today? May this word challenge you. Pick up that phone and call 770-994-3777. May the word of God move you to action. May the word of God move you out of complacency. May the word of God deliver you from religious devils that fill you with all these ethnic thinking, racial issues and bitterness and pride and all this arrogance. No, stop it. You are a son of God. Yield to the Holy Spirit so that you experience true power, victory, <laughs> assigned from the throne by the power of the Spirit in Jesus' name. I just did my finger like this. I hope it doesn't mean anything out there. This means nothing because this generation is crazy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me open my hands and make my decrees in Jesus' name. Receive the grace of God. Hallelujah. Yes, that's why I'm telling you guys, connect with this grace. When you sow into it, the glory will release. Even when I, I do like this, the power will fall in your bedroom and you will experience the power of God. If you believe, hallelujah. <laughs> Sometimes some of our members that are either at home because of COVID or sheltering, you know, whatever, they've experienced the glory at home where some of them have fallen out in the spirit in their bedroom watching the service. This is a glory move, a sovereign move of God that will eclipse this globe. All the secular humanists don't know what's coming. This time is not going to be talk. It will be power. Matching power. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. What a week. We will settle it tomorrow. Amen and amen. We'll see you. Bye-bye.